Welcome to Slam. As promised, it's the Raw after Mania, and it was underwhelming. Extremely underwhelming. That was not a very exciting Raw after Mania, to be honest. Um, so, let's begin. We had, uh, to start the night, Cody Rhodes uh, comes out, cuts a promo about not being that difficult for him to make the decision to jump to WWE. Um, then he cuts an impassioned promo about his father, and uh, wanting to win the big one for his dad. So Cody Rhodes title picture pr pretty soon, probably. Uh, and then Seth freaking Rollins comes out. Uh, we think there's going to be a, a confrontation, but they just shake hands and that's it. So uh, interesting, interesting uh, blip on the radar there. Uh, Boss and Glow take on Live for Brutality. Boss and Glow being Naomi and Sasha Banks, the Raw Women's Tag Champs. Live for Brutality, Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley. Um, this is for a shot at the tag titles, I guess, if Liv and uh, Rhea win. Um, it was a pretty standard tag match. They didn't really um, go anywhere with it. Uh, Naomi and Sasha win. So I guess that's supposedly it for Liv and Rhea, though we find out later in the show it's not. Um, Rhea looks a little disappointed and actually just walks away alone, leaving Liv in the ring on her knees, which... <sighs> no comment. Uh, then we have Kevin Owens in the ring. Once the commercial comes back, uh, he made a mistake, tricking Stone Cold Steve Austin into a match and underestimated him. And you have to be great to beat Kevin Owens because he's one of the greatest to ever step foot in the ring. Correct. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Um, yeah, Kevin Kevin basically immediately erases all of his loss from last night, uh, or from Saturday night, I should say. So, like, it never happened at this point. Kevin Owens is back in the same position he was before WrestleMania. Then, a guy named Ezekiel comes out. Except it's it's Elias, who hasn't been on TV in many a months. It's Elias, going by a different name. He says he's Elias's younger brother, Ezekiel. As we know, it's it's, it's Elias. It's it's freaking Elias. I even called it was Elias. I looked at him very closely when the camera panned up to him during his entrance, and he's like, "Yeah, that's Elias." <laughs> so that's where he's been, shaving his beard and letting his hair grow out. Um, so yeah, that's weird. Next up, we have Dominic Mysterio taking on The Miz. That was a very, very mercifully short match. Mysterio, I think, attempted a 6-1-9, and then Miz caught him in the Skull Crushing Finale, and that was literally the whole match. Um, so that happens, and then guess finally who makes their fucking appearance after 87 weeks of teasing, Veer Mahan finally debuts on Raw. Thank fuck. I thought I was going to be drawing Social Security by the time this guy showed up on television. Um, he hits the ring. He levels Dominic. He levels Ray with a clothesline from hell, which was amazing looking. He's turning heel, basically, which is what we were hoping he wouldn't do. <laughs> I was hoping he would come in and provide a strong, solid uh, babyface character. But I guess Bobby's going to be the Bobby Lash was going to be the monster babyface character, the big, big butch babyface character. Uh, and Veer Mahan is just going to be a big monster heel with a foreign nationality as his gimmick, which is disappointing to say the least. But I will say he looks impressive. Um, the sidewalk slam he gave to Ray was pretty solid. The clothesline was solid. And he did this half camel clutch to Dominic. I, I think they called it the cervical clutch, which... Um, <laughs> That word has two meanings, guys. You might want to fix that. <laughs> it's 
the cervical clutch in some cases you can't show on television. And in fact, I think Carmella wanted Corey Graves to give her the cervical clutch live on WrestleMania last night. So there's there's two meanings to that word, and I think you should come up with a different name. But seriously. Um, then we have bon- Bianca Belair out to cut a promo, which, uh, to be honest, probably the best promo she's ever cut. She's just proven now. She's pro- she proved last night, she was, uh, Saturday night, rather, that she was a fantastic wrestler, as she always does. She proved tonight she's a good talker, too. And it would be probably wise at this point to put the, the push train solidly behind Bianca for a while and leave her with the title for a bit and maybe have her face and dunk on a couple of challengers before... She finally loses the titles again, or the title again, I should say. So, and she did, by the way, have a black eye from what was supposed to be a Molly go round from Becky, but it ended up turning into a Rolling Thunder drop kick from the top rope, drop kicked her right in the face. And Bel Belair has a hell of a shiner from that. Warrior she is, uh, but yeah, typical, typical like babyface promo. It was it was good. It was actually good. So good on you, Bianca. Good WrestleMania weekend for you. Then we get an, an oddity because we have an NXT championship match. Well, this isn't Tuesday night. What the hell's going on? It is, in fact, a rematch from NXT Stand and Deliver as Braun Breaker challenges Dolph Ziggler for the NXT title. And Robert Roode's at ringside for Dolph. Um, is this actually a pretty good match? And honestly, they've, they've, made, they've had Braun wrestle on Raw a couple times now. Just call him up. Just call him up. He's obviously born for this. Call him up. He's a Steiner. He's got natural talent and charisma. Call the man up. He needs to be on main roster. He's a guy you cannot fuck up. Call him up. Put him on the main roster, for God's sakes. Um, He does end up uh, averting a crisis and nearly losing the match the way he lost at Stand and Deliver on Friday. Um... Exposed turnbuckle uh, nearly cost Braun, and then a super kick cost him the match Friday. Today, he was able to kick out of the super kick, deliver that uh, gorilla press slam. It was very impressive looking. There's nothing about Braun Breaker I don't like. And now he is a two, two-time two NXT champion as he defeats Dolph Ziggler soundly. Great, great match, actually. So, solid match. Um, obviously Braun's got the NXT title, but that's never stopped them from calling somebody up before. They called up Kevin Owens while he was still NXT champion, and he is definitely one of the greatest wrestlers to ever step foot into the ring. He said so himself, he will tell you. And I agree with him. Uh, Bobby Lashley in Montel Vontavious Porter, MVP, shows up on television for the first time in several months after a, I believe it was a knee injury of some sort. Um, I can't remember exactly, but I know there was an injury that MVP was nursing. He's back. Bobby comes out, gets on the mic, um, cuts a promo about his match last night with Omas. Omas steps up. He comes out and answers the challenge. I was hoping this would be the end of Lashley and Omas because Omas is a lot. He's very clunky and extremely green, and Lashley had to struggle to get any kind of a match out of him. And it was For what it was worth, it was fine. I don't know that a prolonged feud is what this is what Omas needs. However, MVP turns on Bobby Lashley, attacks him from behind, and he and Omas put the boots to Bobby. And now we have a mouthpiece for Omas, which you know what? I'm going to just say it now. Bobby Lashley no longer needs a mouthpiece. He used to because he couldn't cut a promo for shit back in the day. Lashley is miles better now. He can cut a promo. He doesn't need MVP. Omas definitely needs help. He can't cut a promo. He couldn't cut a, a tuna salad if you gave him a fucking flamethrower. That's how bad Omas is. So putting MVP with him makes sense contextually. I don't know if it'll improve him. We'll have to hope and wait and see and wish in one hand and shit in the other and hope the, the wish hand fills up first. But hey, you know what? It's it was a, and it was a good it was a good swerve for MVP to to jump uh, Lashley from behind. So that was that was fun. And then we get the announcement uh, backstage at Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley are going to challenge for the tag titles next week. Actually, challenge for the tag titles. So I fully expect Rhea Ripley to heal on Liv Morgan and cost them the match. They don't need the tag titles, I guess. Fuck Liv Morgan and her dreams of becoming champion. 
fuck Liv Morgan is a sentence that I've never said in that context. Usually when I say it, never mind, we're going to move on. Zelina Vega and Carmella make their way to the ring, the former women's tag team champions. Um, Carmella is wearing what I can only describe as bridal lingerie. She's got the bra, she's got the panties, she's got a bridal like skirt thing on hanging off of her ass. They get into the ring and I guess the idea is they were supposed to have a match with another tag team, but instead Zelina runs down Carmella as the reason they lost the titles last night. Carmella gets very offended and cuts her out of the wedding. Uh, the wedding to Corey Graves. Everybody, I think it's the worst kept secret now. They finally acknowledged it on television last night. Carmella and Corey Graves are a couple. They have a fucking web series on YouTube. Seriously. I mean, you can literally watch it right now on YouTube. If you pause this video, I'll give you like 20 minutes. You go watch all their episodes. They're like five minutes a piece. Then come back here. Um, but... They they get heated. So, uh, Vega attacks Carmella, beats her down to ringside. She runs into Corey Graves' arms. Um, Vega walks away after pulling her off of Corey Graves and beating her down. Um, Corey picks her up, puts her in the seat, and then they begin vociferously making out. And vociferously, look it up. <laughs> That's a word. It is a real word, and it very aptly describes what was happening there. Six-man tag, Austin Theory teaming with the Usos to take on Finn Balor, the United States Champion, and their tag partners, RK-Bro, the Raw Tag Team Champions. Finn Balor did not participate in WrestleMania this weekend, so of the six men, he's the only one who's probably 100%. Um, it was a decent match, actually. I, I, I liked it. I liked all the spots, and I think Austin Theory continues to impress me. Um, he is actually the one that picks up the pinfall for his team. Uh, he beats Finn Balor straight up, which means he's got a future United States Championship opportunity coming his way, undoubtedly. Uh, and honestly, you know what? I don't care that he's a heel. I'm behind him. Austin Theory, I hope you win the U.S. title. I think it's probably going to happen. Uh, I hope Austin Theory wins the U.S. title. He needs some cred. He needs some title cred. Edge comes out. He's got a mic. Um, I don't like his theme music, by the way. Uh, I just realized he had new theme music. I, I haven't really been paying attention to his theme music over the last few weeks, but now I've noticed it's like, I don't think it fits him. I know it's Alter Bridge. I know it's Alter Bridge. I know it's const it's, it's, it's the go-to band for Mr. Copeland, but I don't think it fits him. So he cuts a promo about, um, uh, about last night's WrestleMania match. The cat is playing with stuff down here. <laughs> Edge comes out. He cuts a promo about uh, last night's match with uh, AJ Styles, which was great. It was a good match. Um, and then he talks briefly about Damian Priest coming to ringside. And Edge is like, I don't know why he's there, but that gives me an idea. Let's bring him out here and talk about why he made the decision that he made. And it turns out, yay, Damian Priest loves Edge and wants to kiss him and make out with him and spoon him. He wants to be the big spoon. Um... No, it, it, as a matter of fact, this is the stable, I think the beginnings of the stable that we've been rumored to be hearing about, uh, Edge, Damian Priest, there's probably going to be more. I don't even know who would fit the bill. I'm trying to rack my brains to figure out, like, who actually would, like, fit the bill for an Edge stable at this point. And I can't think of anybody else. You might have to call somebody up from NXT, um, honestly, because I, I can't think of anybody else. Like, Rhea Ripley would fit, but she's... The competition for her would be a little bit limited, I think. Um, and interactions with her and Edge Stable would be a lot limited, too, because they're, I mean, they're different divisions. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Back from commercial. Alpha Academy and the Street Profits set to clash. They attack each other. Adam Pierce comes out and says, Hey, you guys want to beat the shit out of each other? Go right ahead. It's a Texas Tornado match. No disqualifications. No countouts. And that's what happens. And this actually ends up being a pretty good match. Um, I love these kinds of matches, obviously, so I'm a little biased. But um, the cat found something else to play with. Yo! What'd I tell you? <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, Alpha Academy and Street Profits actually had a really good match. Um, I, Of course, like I said, I love these kinds of matches. I'm a little biased, just a little bit. 
There was a table spot. It was magnificent. I mean, these guys work pretty well with each other. And, and sad that this is probably the blow-off for that. RK Bros obviously moved on to something else. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the end of that. And uh, Street Profits pick up the win after the aforementioned table spot. And then uh, the final segment of the evening is Roman Reigns coming out to get his acknowledgments. And uh, the crowd actually are chanting for him. So, But re remember, this is Raw After Mania crowd, so it's Bizarro World. So that doesn't really mean a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. Um, but Roman cuts his promo saying he does all this stuff. He's in God mode. He's on another level. He is the needle mover. He t said he was going to destroy Brock Lesnar last night, and he did. Blah, blah, blah. He's got two title belts. The Usos have got championships. There's nobody, seemingly nobody stopped Bloodline. And we're going to find out exactly what happens next for Roman Reigns Friday night on SmackDown. So we have to wait for the rest of the week to go by before we find out where Roman's going to end up next. Um... First question is, are you going to have to carry two belts around? Are we just going to have you as both champion of Raw and SmackDown for now? Or are we going to combine them and have one big belt and reintroduce a belt? Or is the brand split over? I have no fucking clue. Underwhelming Raw, 7 out of 10. Um, best match of the evening has to probably go to... I'm going to go ahead and say it's the Tornado Tag Match. Um, Street Profits and Alpha Academy. Um, just because it was wild, it was fun, and uh, it was it was fun to watch. So there you go. And technically, it was the main event of the show, <laughs> uh, outside of the, if unless you call Reign of, Roman Reigns' promo a main event, which I don't. Um, the match that goes on last is the main event in my eyes. So anyway, underwhelming for Raw after Mania, but it was better than a regular episode of Raw, so I can't fault it too much. It does set up a lot of stuff for in the future. We established Cody wants to go after the championship, so I'm assuming Roman's next program is with Cody Rhodes. So maybe a family versus family situation. I don't know how that will work because Dustin Rhodes is still in AEW. He's not leaving, so Cody's kind of on his own. Are they going to bring Ted Diabetes Jr. back? Um, Ted DiBiase Jr., of course, for those of you wondering. That was a keyboard in the background. He's named Keyboard because he jumps on keyboards. That was It didn't take a rocket scientist to come up with that cat's name. Uh, so that's it for this edition of Slam. Uh, like I said, underwhelming Raw after Mania, but it was better than a regular episode, so I can't fault it too much. Thanks for watching. Uh, of course, if you like what we do, hit subscribe down there and hit the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. And as always, keep on slamming. We'll see you next time.